Today I want to take a look at um, the preview of Windows Server 2016 technical review. And the reason I want to do this, even though I do mostly Linux tutorials, is because I feel as a sysadmin you should be well-rounded. It's best if you're able to work on different platforms. And to do that, you should be able to be abreast on you know, different Windows server platforms as well as Linux server platforms. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that and see what's new and out there. And I'm going to go ahead and do an installation. So first of all, we go to the Microsoft website. I'll have a link in the notes below on the website to go to to download the free technical review of Windows Server 2016. And they changed a little bit about the pricing. So they only have the standard edition and the data center edition now. And if you notice here, they changed a little bit about how the pricing is done based on the number of cores. I think before it was the number of processors, now it's the number of cores on your system. So we can go ahead and click on Evaluate, and it's going to take its page, and we're going to download the ISO. You can download a Nano VHD for virtualization, but I'm just going to go ahead and do the ISO and register. You do have to have a Microsoft account to do this download, so you go ahead and register really quick, and it asks you to do a quick survey as well. So once you do that, the ISO will take a little while to download. It is a pretty big download, and it's going to ask you what language, of course, and the installation is pretty straightforward. It looks a lot like the Windows Server 2012 installation. If you've done that download, it looks pretty similar. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And some of the new features for Windows Server 2016 include improvement with virtualization performance and time synchronization, as well as some Active Directory security. And it comes now with a malware protection built in. So they install Windows Defender in Windows Server 2016, so it comes with pre-built um, malware protection. All right, so once we download our ISO here, you can either you know, make a bootable USB, or if you do it on a VM, you can go ahead and just mount the VM, um, mount the ISO on the VM. So let's go ahead and load, and we're gonna start our installation. Here's our Microsoft logo. <laughs> um, and it's pretty quick installation, so it pretty much asks for your language and keyboard type and hit next, then click install. If you're doing a repair, that you click repair there and you can go ahead and bring up a command line to do any sort of repair or system recovery. If you're, this is a Windows server and you're doing a system recovery, um, it can be pretty difficult, I noticed in the past from experience. So you can either say I don't have a product key or you go back to that website you downloaded the ISO from and the key will be listed. So go ahead and do that. Go back to the Microsoft website you downloaded from and get that key. Again, this is a free product. This is for a technical review. Now, Microsoft is really pushing the uh, Windows Server Core installation, which is the non-graphical user interface, so no desktop. They're really pushing that to improve system performance on your servers. So if you have experience with PowerShell or the command line, go ahead and install that. But if you really need that desktop, be sure to select the second option, which is not the default option anymore. So be sure to set that. If you're doing any sort of Active Directory administration or IIS type stuff, you're going to need that desktop to be able to manage those um, services. But if you if this is like a backup domain controller or um, maybe licensing server, then you can get away with the Windows Server Core and have improved performance. Again, we'll go ahead and set that licensing. And I always do custom install. You can do upgrade. If this has server, I almost never recommend doing an upgrade. Always try to do that fresh installation. It'll reformat your file system, install. Get rid of all your old files, completely brand new install. I think it's just less likely to have an issue. So let's go ahead and create our file system. It's going to create two files, system reserve, that has system OS files on there, and then your C drive, essentially what's going to be your C drive is the second one created. So be sure to have both file systems created, and then it's going to start the installation. Um, again, it's relatively fast install. <clears throat> if you're new to Windows Server, um, what's commonly used now is Windows Server 2012. 2008 is still out there. 2003 is end of life. So if you're doing a brand new server install, try to go with Windows Server 2012. And I would practice on here. And you know, if you're going to be in IT for a while, definitely go ahead and make sure you test out this 2016 installation before you actually put in production with your current infrastructure. So you go ahead and download it like I'm doing right now and testing it out. So again, they did make a number of improvements here. A lot of it was security, a virtualization, system management, 
So um, I'll go ahead and list some of them in the notes below. But I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at the infrastructure, I'm sorry, the desktop, as well as how it would work in my infrastructure if I was able to deploy it tomorrow. So you kind of want to make sure that it will not cause any issues with the current IT infrastructure in your data center. Once it's done installing the system, we'll go ahead and restart. And restart, it will prompt you for your admin password, username as administrator. Um, and then go ahead and type in your password. It does have a complexity requirement. So include like an uppercase, lowercase, and a number, and a special character in there. Make sure it's sufficiently long. Once you select an appropriate password, go ahead and finish. And we're going to use this login username and password to log into our new Windows Server install. Now let's go ahead and log into our system. So you'll see the time very similar to a Windows 10 desktop. So we're going to go ahead and log in with our administrator account. Some best practices recommend changing the administrator username to a non-standard username such as administrator for security purposes. So now here we are to our desktop and click on our start menu. And again, you kind of see that Windows 10 feel here. So it is slightly different from our Windows Server 2012 desktop. I actually prefer this, but again, this is a preference. All the same functionality is there. So it has the basic install, it has the um, system manager, administrative tools, and your PowerShell, and DOS command shell, and all the regular uh, utilities commonly found on Windows Server. So that as far as hasn't changed. Um, you would find Windows Defender on here now, so you got some built-in malware, which is pretty good if you're actually installing this on a live network. So you want to make sure it's secure right away. So if we bring up Server Manager, we can kind of take a quick look at that, and I found that it looks pretty similar to Windows Server 2012, so you have previous experience using Server Manager. Great tool for managing not only your system, but other systems on your network as well. So you get a, your local server preview and settings. You can install roles and features through here, pretty much the standard stuff you could have done before. So this is my quick review of Windows Server 2016, um, Technical Review 5. So I'm probably going to do a review on Server Manager soon and different things you could do with server managers. So come back for that. Otherwise, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys next time.